What's up everybody, back again with another reaction. And next up I got the seven weirdly similar games that released at the same time. It's by the channel Games Radar. I'll leave the link to the original video in the description below. So let's get it. This is Anthony John Agnello, Senior Social Editor at Game know, Radar. I know Infamous and probably a a Prototype are probably going to be on it here. Sometimes, for whatever reason, two almost identical ideas percolate at the exact same time and spring forth into the world, making everyone wonder, wait, who the hell is copying who? No one is copying anyone. Sometimes a good idea is just a good idea, as it is with these seven pairs of deeply similar games that were released back to back. Tenshu Stealth Assassins and Metal Gear Solid, 1998. Stealth had all but disappeared from console gaming by 98, and then not one but two games made it one of the most popular genres going. Metal Gear Solid's brand of dramatic espionage made the series an instant. I don't know, I've never really been a fan of Metal Gear anyways. Has faded away, it's I'm not a big fan of stealth type games either. Drive Club and the Crew, 2014. Social racing! Sony and Ubisoft yeah, assured us in 2014 that this was the future of driving games. Always online racers that had you constantly comparing your performance. I've played both in there. Wow, it's pretty similar. Not work at all. Drive Club was a buggy mess, missing key features when it released, and the crew was a lifeless misery made worse by its needless story. Even Nolan North sounded bored in the crew. Unsurprisingly, after 2015's Link Need for Speed reboot that ate the same format, the Drive Club crew model of racing has faded away. Retro City Rampage and Hotline Miami. Well, I knew that was that coming eventually. New hands to the 1980s appeared right at the moment when indie game design was busting through the mainstream. Hotline Miami and Retro They actually never played Hotline Miami. Auto, but while the former used ultra violence to create a surreal, disturbing satire, the latter went for straight parody and big explosions. Infamous and Prototype. I, I knew it. In 09, two developers asked simultaneously, What if open world but with superheroes? Prototype answered the question by going full 90s Todd McFarlane circa Spawn emphasizing brutal violence. Infamous Damn. the early aughts Marvel route, proposing the Cole McGrath could either be good, like comics Magneto, or crazy evil, like movie Magneto. Both games spawned sequels, but never managed to make a perfect open-world superhero experience. PsyOps, The Mind Gate Conspiracy, and Second Sight, 2004. Throwing stuff with your brain was a popular game mechanic in 2004. While both PsyOps and Second Sight came complete with a ridiculous... I actually never heard of those two games. ...apparently necessary to tell a story about psychics, they came at the empowerment fantasy from opposite directions. In PsyOps, you're already a soldier, gung-ho and ready for battle. In Second Sight, you're a barely alive amnesiac at the beginning, slowly coming back into your ability to wreck things telekinetically. Unreal Tournament and Quake 3 Arena, 1999. Never played these either. A ship that launched a thousand first-person shooters, probably more than that after the past quarter century, but it was the double blitz of Unreal Tournament and Quake 3 that made team deathmatch shooters the billion-dollar business it is today. The high-octane speed of Unreal and the weighty feel of Quake 3 can still be felt in descendants like Call of Duty today. Hell, Call of Duty still uses part of the Quake engine. Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen announced in 2012. So technically Star Citizen might not ever come out in the form it was supposed to when it was announced back in 2012, shortly before Elite Dangerous. But given how crowdfunders responded to both at the time, there was and is a powerful thirst for massive space exploration games. 
Elite Dangerous, eh. however, is a game that exists. Oh, no, it doesn't the look too interesting. Since 2014, it's been updated numerous times. At least in my opinion. Brand of painstakingly slow space simulating. Star Citizen, on the other hand, is, as of this writing, still primarily a way for rich people to buy imaginary spaceships they can't do anymore. If you enjoyed this feature and want more like it, follow GamesRadar at youtube.com slash gamesradar. That was a pretty good list. Uh, like I said, I already knew Prototype and Infamous was going to be on that list. and. You know, I kind of had a feeling that Retro City Rampage and, and Hotline Miami was going to be on the list as well. So, but I, you know, like I said, I've never really played Hotline Miami, to be honest, I, or the sequel. So, you know, I don't know, it just didn't look like anything I, I'd be interested in. But Retro City Rampage on the other hand, oh boy, that game is awesome. So, at least until you get to the part where they added, you know, the... Uh, the one where you're in that studio or whatever where uh, I forget what game it's parodying um god it's like towards the end of the game but it, it's you know pretty much like parodying uh, like an old like NES type game I if if y'all know what I'm talking about I leave a comment down below you know and let me know so but I I feel like it's like right on tip of my tongue but I, I can't remember but it, it yeah, when you get to that part, oh boy, that, ooh, it, it almost made me break my controller, I'm gonna be honest with you, but I, anyway, so yeah, leave a comment down below, let me know what y'all thought, and if you liked this video, remember to like, and subscribe, thanks.